Now, um, there is uh, there are a couple of uh, points I want to make, and then I, I will state one proposition. So, um, so consider. Did somebody have a question? Was there a question? So I'm defining an orthonormal square matrix. Yeah, go ahead. OK, so let's consider an orthonormal square matrix. This is a matrix such that it has orthogonal and unit norm columns. That's the definition of an orthonormal matrix. And it has the property that or another way to define it is a mat the matrix Q satisfies Q transpose Q equals Q Q transpose equals the identity matrix. So by the way, in, for, in general, it's always true that for square matrices, If A B equals the identity matrix, then then B A is also equal to the identity matrix. Okay, this is easy to see. Um, basically, um, if B A is not equal to the identity matrix, then um, B A minus I is non-zero, which uh, implies now if I uh, pre-multiply by A, then A B A minus A is not equal to zero, but A B is equal to the identity matrix, so which implies a minus a is not equal to zero, which is a contradiction. OK, so for square matrices, it's always true that if a b equals i, then b a equals i. Therefore, if I say q transpose q equals i, then q q transpose must also be equal to the identity matrix. So there is another definition for an orthonormal matrix, which is the definition I'm going to use for stating this proposition, which is that um, um, a matrix A in yeah. Sir, in above proof, B A we are taking not is equal to I. Yeah. So why am I writing A B A is equal to A? A B is equal to I. Right. If A B equals I, that's what we are trying to show here. That if A B is I, then B A is not is must also be equal to I. So A B is equal to the identity matrix. Identity times A is always equal to A whatever A is. Yes, sir, I got it. Thank you. Yeah. I have a doubt. So yeah. on the top you have written Q transpose Q equals Q Q transports uh, equal to identity matrix. But yeah. the dimension of Q transpose Q will not be equal to the dimension of Q Q transpose, right? Square. Oh, OK, it's for n crossing. OK, fine, OK. 
uh, if it is suppose if it's in rectangular matrix then how will this then it's no longer true that uh, if q transpose q is i then q q transpose must be equal to i okay but either of them will hold true right like at least so, i mean uh, if one doesn't hold true then other will definitely hold true right in case it's an orthogonal matrix so if the columns are orthonormal then q transpose q will contain as its entries inner products between columns okay and so that will be equal to the identity matrix but q q transpose need not be the identity matrix okay similarly if the rows are orthonormal then q q transpose will be the identity matrix but q transpose q need not be the identity matrix okay fine okay sir yeah. so this is said to be an orthonormal matrix if it preserves um, the inner product so what i mean by that is if i take the inner product between ax and ay that is equal to the inner product between x and y for every x and y belonging to r to the n okay so that's also uh, another definition of an orthonormal matrix okay so <clears throat> here is the proposition so the following statements are equivalent a a is so here a is a matrix in r to the n cross n b is a preserves the length by that i mean av for every v in r to the n so recall okay that's the definition of the uh, re in fact um, for the moment i won't write the subscript 2 because this result is actually more general it doesn't require the inner product to be defined the way we have been defining it until now we've seen only one example of an inner product there are other possible uh, definitions for the inner product but right now we are working with the dot product um uh, as the notion of the inner product but any other valid notion of the inner product can be used to define a norm defined like this okay and that is called um a norm that is induced by an inner product and this is true for any definition any valid definition of an inner product okay so um points uh, sir uh can you uh, explain uh, the previous definition a, a x a y equal to x y what is a x it is the column yeah x is a vector so a x is a vector so okay. it's looking uh, at the inner uh, product between a x and a y okay so what is x and y it is numbers or vectors it's right here x y belongs to r to the n 
Uh, so if it's a column one and column two, it'll be one and two. What do you mean? X is a vector in R to the N. Y is a vector in R to the N. Okay. X and Y are vectors. X is a vector and Y is a vector. So if you compute the inner product between X and Y, whatever number you get is the same number as what you would get if you computed the inner product between AX and AY. And that's true for any pair of vectors I choose. Okay. I think this is important that everybody understands the definition, otherwise this entire proposition makes no sense. So if you have other questions about uh, the definition of an orthonormal matrix, please ask. The definition is that it should preserve the inner product. That is, you take two vectors in R to the n. If you find their inner product, that is x, y. And then you take a, x and a, y. Those are also two vectors in R to the n. And you find their inner product. And the, those two numbers must be equal for all pairs of vectors in R to the n. Not for just one particular pair. Sure. Yes, yeah, but... Uh, sir, actually, uh, uh, in that inner product line, is a, a matrix into a vector is actually a transformation, right? Yes. Uh, so, what is the meaning? I mean, inner product is actually the length. Uh, I mean, the component of x along y or something uh, in that sense, right? I mean, uh, inner yeah. product between x and y means the component of x along y. Correct. So, uh, so it's preserving kind of, those. Uh, it's preserving the relative or orientations of x and y. That is what okay. it means. Okay. In whatever frame we transform transform these vectors. Yes. Yes. So, okay. So, so uh, if, uh, for example, x and y were orthogonal, they were perpendicular transformation by a, they will remain perpendicular to each other. Are collinear with each other, then even after transformation by A, they will remain collinear with each other. That's what it means. Okay. Okay. And mathematically, this is the precise meaning of a matrix being an orthonormal matrix. It preserves all inner products, okay. not just when X and Y are orthogonal or not just when they are collinear. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Hmm. Uh, so just a question like uh, it is not uh, the uh, when uh, uh, multiplied uh, 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 a vector with a uh, mm. it's not changing the length so uh, is it, uh, it it will rotate the vector yeah that's a good way to think about it uh, it will rotate the vector but it will not change its length so yeah. In some say, so another way to put it is that every rotation matrix is actually an orthonormal matrix. Okay. And every orthonormal matrix can be thought of as a rotation matrix. Okay, sir. Sir, is this sometimes called orthogonal matrix as well? Yeah, so that's actually some, that's actually a good point. Depending on the textbook you refer some textbooks refer to this uh, this kind of matrix as an orthogonal matrix. Some textbooks refer to it as an orthonormal matrix. Um, I prefer the terminology of orthonormal matrix because it also clearly tells you that every column is unit norm. Um, an orthogonal matrix, uh, if you really wanted a more general definition, it is a matrix where the columns need not be unit norm, but they are still orthogonal to each other. OK, that could be a more general definition of an orthogonal matrix. Um, but uh, yeah, just to be clear, I want to call it an orthonormal matrix in this course. And it's a matrix whose columns are unit norm and are orthogonal to each other. These are two equivalent de definitions. But for the purposes of showing this proposition, I will go with this definition, meaning that it's an orthonormal matrix if it preserves the inner product. So the third property is that A transpose is equal to A inverse. A is an invertible matrix, which means that A transpose A equals A, A transpose, which equals the identity matrix. And the fourth property 
is that the rows of A form an orthonormal basis for R to the N. And the last one is that the columns also form an orthonormal basis for R to the N. <coughs> okay, so how do you prove such a proposition? So it says that these statements are equivalent, meaning that if I tell you that A is orthonormal, it's the same as me telling you that A preserves length. So if you have five statements like this, the way to show that all of these are equivalent is to say, for example, you take the first two statements, you should show that A implies B and B implies A. That means A and B are equivalent. Then you take, the, say, the third statement, C. Then what you have to show is that either A or B, one of those two statements implies C, and C implies either A or B, one of those two statements. Then it means that A, B, and C are equivalent. Then similarly, you take D and you show that D implies one of these three statements, A, B, or C. And you should show also that A, B, or C, one of these three statements implies D, and so on. If you show all of that, then, uh, then you've shown that these statements are all equivalent. Of course, there are many ways to do it. For example, you show A implies B and B implies A. Then you show B implies C and C implies B. Then you show C implies D and D implies C and D implies E and E implies D. So that also means that these statements are all equivalent. So let's uh, let's see how to show this. So first we'll tackle A implies B. So we want to show that if A is an orthonormal matrix, then it preserves the length, meaning that any for any vector, if I look at the length of V, it's equal to the length of the transformed version of V, which is AV. So, um, and, uh, and vice versa. Okay, if A preserves length of every vector in R to the N, then A must be an orthonormal matrix. So, um, to show first A implies B, an orthonormal matrix implies that it preserves the length, then what I need to do is, I just need to consider um, the inner product between AX and AX. And uh, this, um, the inner product between AX and AX, um, because A is an orthonormal matrix, by definition, it preserves inner product. So basically, this is equal to the inner product between X and X. OK, so that that means that if I so this is nothing but. A X square and this is nothing but X square, which means that. A X equals X. So uh, this means that. Uh, so this is what we wanted to show that A preserves length. So A implies B. Similarly, B implies A. What I need to do is uh, I need to show that if A preserves the length, then A is an orthonormal matrix. That means that all inner products um, are unchanged by multiplication by A. So what I'll do is Sir? I'll consider, yeah. Sir, could you explain how inner product of AX with itself is equals to inner product of X with itself? That's from the definition. So what I want to show here is that if A is orthonormal, then it preserves length. So if A is orthonormal, by definition, because it's an orthonormal matrix, it preserves the inner product. The inner product between any two vectors. In fact, uh, Y need not be equal to X. So if A is an orthonormal matrix, then AX, AY is equal to the inner product between X and Y. This is true for all pairs of vectors, X and Y. And so all I'm doing is to take a special case of this, where Y equals X. 
So the inner product between AX and AX is equal to the inner product between X and X. So you can see that although the statements look uh, quite different from each other, saying that A is an orthonormal matrix, meaning that it preserves inner products, and saying that A preserves length, they seem different from each other in terms of statements, but in fact, it follows trivially from the definition. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So if I take the inner product between A x plus Y and A x plus Y, this, um, this because because A preserves length. So now I want to show that B implies A. So A preserves length. So this is nothing but the length of A times X plus Y square. And so this must be equal to the length of X plus Y square. But if I expand this out by using the linearity of inner products, then this this, this thing can be written like this. Uh, it's the inner product between AX and AX plus two times the inner product between AX and AY plus the inner product between AY and AY. And the right hand side if I expand this out, I get the inner product of X with itself plus two times the inner product between X and Y plus the inner product between Y and Y. Now, once again, I use the property that A preserves length. So this quantity, inner product between AX and AX, this is equal to the inner product between X and X. And this term, is equal to the inner product between y and y. So this xx will cancel with this xx. This yy cancels with this yy. And uh, the 2 and 2 can cancel. And so you're left with ax ay equals xy. So it preserves inner products. And so then it is orthonormal. Then we consider um, C, the, the, the statement C. So, Sir. yeah. <coughs> Sir, the moment you are considering inner product of AX, comma AX is X, comma X. So that moment only you are considering it to be orthogonal, right? Orthonormal, right? Otherwise, that is what how... showing here, actually. Yeah, but uh, so... in the second last step, you already considered AX, comma AX is X, comma X. So what we are trying to show here, okay, I think it's important to uh, pay attention a little bit to what we want to show. So what we want to show is that B implies A. What is, what is that? It is that if A preserves the length, that is if norm of AV equals norm of V for every V in R to the N, then A preserves the inner product that is the inner product between AX and AY is equal to the inner product between X and Y for all XY in R to the N. That is what we want to show. And that's what we're doing here. It's not a difficult proof. It's very simple, but um, it's good to keep in mind exactly what it is that we are showing. So in writing the first step, I'm, I'm using the fact that B is true. I'm saying if B is true, then I want to show that A will preserve an inner product between any pair of vectors. So this is true because A preserves the length. This is also true because A preserves the length. AX, AX equals X comma X. That's also true because A preserves the length. And similarly, AY, AY equals YY is because A preserves the length. And a consequence of this is that I'm getting AX, AY inner product is equal to the inner product between X and Y, which means that A is orthonormal. Sure. Yeah. Sir, so uh, you gave the definition that uh, 
an orthonormal it's an a is an orthonormal matrix if it preserves the inner product but that statement does not speak about the converse that is if it is if it preserves the inner product then it should be orthonormal that part is not implied by the definition right yeah so um uh, so this is also a very good point in mathematics uh, a definition is always an if and only if statement okay, okay. so we 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 write it like this a matrix is said to be an orthonormal matrix if it preserves the inner product but when we are saying that it is said to be or it is defined as an orthonormal matrix we mean that this is an if and only if condition okay 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 by definition an orthonormal matrix is one which preserves the inner product all definitions in mathematics are like this we define something to be uh, in 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 a particular way it means that you know a is equivalent to b if if i define a to be equal to b or a to be or uh, or uh, if i say a matrix a is defined to have a property uh, x if it satisfies y it means that uh, x and y are equivalent to each other okay now um, let's uh, let's do the next step uh, next um, if i consider the inner product between um, ax and y i'll make a statement this is equal to the inner product between x and a transpose y this can be seen by just writing out the expansion of what this will be um, so basically this axy is uh, nothing but su summation uh, i equals 1 to n sigma j equals 1 to n aij uh, xi and yj and if you expand this out in, in terms of the entries of a you will find that this is also exactly the summation so i should say okay so um now what i can do is instead of y i will replace y with ay then what happens is that i get so i i should write that out so we don't have confusion later then what i get is the inner product between ax and ay now um because uh, so suppose a is a an orthonormal matrix then it preserves inner products so that means that this is equal to xy and this is equal to the inner product between x and a transpose a times y and this is true for every x y so if a is orthonormal then we have that this is equal to this for every x y in r to the n so then that means that uh, what i can do is i can take um, example vectors for x and y x equal to ei the ith column of the identity matrix and y equal to ej where um, ei equals the ith column of i n cross n then what i have is if i consider the left hand side this um, ei ej um, so ei ej is equal to i can write it as delta ij which is this equal to 1 if i equals j and 0 otherwise 
then uh, the right hand side is the inner product between E i and A transpose A E j, which basically if you expand this out, you see that you will see that this exactly pulls out the i j entry of A transpose A. So that means that the ij entry of A transpose A is delta ij. Which means that A transpose A is the identity matrix. So then it means that A is A transpose is the inverse of A. and A implies C. So we've shown that. Now, conversely, if A transpose A is equal to the identity matrix, then if I consider the inner product between X and A transpose A Y, this is equal to this is the identity matrix. So this is always equal to X and Y, the inner product. Okay, because A transpose A doesn't change Y at all. But then the left hand side, this I can move this A transpose over here and um, I can, so more generally, so I, I, let me just write it like this, X, a transpose times A Y. I'll consider this to be some vector. A transpose times something is equal to the inner product between A X and A Y. And so thus A X A Y equals X Y for all X Y in R to the N and thus um, C implies A. Okay, and uh, uh, the, the last step is just that um, if A a transpose equals i, it means that the rows of A are orthonormal. So we've seen that um, yeah, so these two are equivalent statements because this is just computing the inner product between rows of A. And if this is equal to i, it means if I take any pair of, uh, any distinct pair of rows, they are orthogonal to each other. And if I take any row, it has unit uh, inner product with itself. So the rows of A are orthonormal. They are both equivalent statements. And so C implies D and D implies C. And similarly, A transpose A equals i is the same as saying that the columns of A are orthonormal. Yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, sir, in order to show that uh, inner product of AX and Y is same as inner product of X and A transpose Y, can we use this uh, formulation that inner product of uh, X comma Y is same as X transpose Y? Yeah, it's and the then, same point. Uh, yeah, it's exactly the same. Right? Yeah, it's yes, exactly the then same we can point. Separate them. Okay. This is it. This is the point. So because you know this summation sometimes does not click how to write in form of this uh, two summations. But in, I mean directly doing the transpose we can easily separate it out. Yeah, so but uh, that will be valid. Um, yeah, so you can do it that way also. Okay. Okay, sir. thank you. No, so the thing is that, uh, you know, it, it follows from the definition of the 
in a product that we said. So it's you have to take the transpose of the first vector and then multiply it with the second vector. Yes. And so if you think of it that way, it follows immediately. That's also a valid way to write it out. OK, any other questions? Sir, is that true for all A? No, right? Of course, this okay. is always true. Okay. AX comma Y in a product is always equal to X comma A transpose Y. What the previous student just said is that if I think of X, Y to be equal to Y transpose X, if I think of it this way, which is how I defined the usual inner product earlier, then um, then if I were to take AX and Y, this is equal to Y transpose AX, which is also equal to A transpose Y whole transpose times X. Yeah, I and which I can write as X transpose times A transpose Y. No, I don't need to do that. So, so here to uh, prove the equivalence of five statements, uh, we are actually going through ten proofs, but actually six proofs would uh, suffice, right? Because um, A implies B, B implies C, C implies D, D implies E, then E implies A, then all of them will imply each other. Yeah. So that's also a valid way to show it. There are many ways to write out this proof. I've shown you one way here. 